What's up, everybody? Thank you so much, as always, for your constant support of my channel. Today, I'm excited because we are going to begin a very highly requested series, which is how to use Xenology Pro. Uh, so you can see Xenology Pro hopefully up here on my screen, and you can see my face. So I'm pretty pumped. I got this nice little setup. So in this video, we are going to talk about what Xenology Pro is, why you might want it, and why you might find use in this series, even if you never decide to purchase or use Xenology Pro. So I'm so excited about this new series that I made a new little video intro for it, which is this. All right, I have some fun. So first off, to get out of the way, Xenology Pro costs, I believe, 220 US dollars to purchase lifetime access, or it comes with Roland Cloud's 9.99 per month package. It's not exactly cheap, so let's quick cover why you might want to buy it. Um, so first off, um, the first reason you might want to buy it is that it is the Roland sound. Uh, it gives you access to the history of Roland's stuff, at least everything that they thought was worthwhile putting into their flagship VST. It is their flagship VST, so just about anything you might want Roland-y will come out of it if you, if you give it a little bit of effort. Now, that was not a good, that was not a reason that I bought it. Um, what I think is a far more important uh, reason that you might want it is is my reason number two to buy it, which is character. Personally, coming from a guitar background and a, doing a lot of synth stuff, people use the word character a lot to mean different things, and to me, it means when I stop thinking about what guitar it is, what pedals it has, what oscillator it has, what people are doing, and it starts to sound just like one single voice, one character, one person talking or singing to me. That's what I think of when I think of character. I'm not thinking about what is what is it, but I'm like, that is a voice that is singing to me. Um, and to me, Xenology Pro, just oozing with this. Um, in the guitar world, you talk about like fingers and pedals and and amps and whatever. In the synth world, we talk about oscillators and filters and effects and modulations to get this character out of stuff. And I think personally, with uh, Xenology Pro's unique PCM style oscillators and the MFX section that we'll talk about, um, just just oodles of character here. I think that's a good reason that you might want to at least take an interest in Xenology Pro. That's not why I bought it though. The, the third reason that you may want to buy it is its compatibility with Zen Core products. So Zen uh, Roland has taken this Zen Core engine, which is what drives Xenology Pro, and it also drives almost all of their modern uh, synth products. Um, and that includes the Jupiter X and XM, the Phantom N0, the MC707 and 101, the MV1, the RD88 Stage Piano, the Axe Edge Keytar, the Aerophone Pro and AE20, which are electronic saxophones, uh, and Zen Beats and ZC1 is their like iOS um, groove box software. So if you have any of those, you can make patches in Xenology Pro and transfer them to your device and use them there. And it's not always the most convenient thing, um, but in cases like I have the MC101 and the MV1, neither of which have like full access to the Zencore sound shaping ability, but Xenology Pro gives me that full access and lets me be a lot more flexible with how I do sound design. Um, so if you have the MC101 or the MV1 and you're interested in that sort of thing, you can check out my other videos. I have some free sound packs that open up a lot of possibilities because of how powerful Xenology Pro is. Um, that's the reason that I bought it, and I sort of fell in love with it because of the character reason listed as number two. Um, so that leads me into the next point, which is that's one reason you might care about this tutorial, is if you have any of those devices, um, this will understanding Xenology Pro will help you understand your device, m most likely. If you're a little bit confused about how some stuff works, understanding Xenology Pro will help, I think, give a clear view of what's actually going on inside your device. 
Uh, so that, I think, can open up some doors to creativity and be helpful with all sorts of things that you might want to do. So I would suggest maybe giving it a try. Um, so yeah, so that covers what it is, how it works-ish, and why you might want it. So we're just going to do a real quick overview of Xenology Pro, which you can see on your screen. Over on the right, I think it's the right side of your screen, there's a little meter uh, that you can hopefully see the audio moving through when I play. And that is just showing you like a spectrum. That is FL Studio's Wave Candy. If you're familiar with it, most people that do like Image Line, FL Studio tutorials, Harmer, Citrus, whatever, you're probably sort of familiar with that. Um, but it just gives a little visual of what what sound we're hearing. Um, so let's first, the first thing you want to do when you open up Xenology Pro is if you come up to the menu here and click zoom, um, you can use the scroll wheel to change the zoom size. Uh, and that is really useful. I bring it up to the biggest that will fit on my screen, which is 176%. Then you just click again, and now you're at your preferred zoom, uh, which is pretty cool. Oh, I should say, it might actually look like this when you start. Uh, and if you click this edit button, it brings up the rest of it. So, uh, real quick, uh, there's two buttons here, Visual Edit and Pro Edit. We're going to talk about both screens, but for now we're going to stay on Visual Edit. Um, so you have right here... On the left, you have your oscillator section. Right now, it's a piano, but it can also be a saw wave, weird stuff, a super saw noise. We're going to talk about all these in the future, but for the moment, we're just going to cover this is the oscillator section. Um, up here at the top, you have the structure section, and we actually uh, use this mostly to navigate around. Um, you can navigate between the different partials. Uh, that make up the sound. There's four of them, but we'll talk about that in the future. Uh, you can change how the partials interact with each other, uh, and you can also click on these individual buttons so you can look at all the pitch of all four partials at the same time, the oscillator section of all four partials at the same time, etc. There's also a secret menu here. If you click on range control, uh, and this gives you a lot of control over uh, velocity splits or keyboard splits or other matrix type of things. Um, next up, we've got the LFO section here. You got two different LFOs. There's a lot of different stuff you can do with the different LFOs. Uh, down here, we've got the pitch section. So uh, this is a we can control the pitch here of the individual partials, but this also is like a complicated envelope, which we'll talk about in a future video. Um, then we've got the here we've got the filter. You can change the filter type here. And they all do different sorts of things. And then if you click over here, you have the filter envelope, which you can control again this way. Very nice. And then over here, finally, you have the amp envelope, uh, which is the same as the other envelopes here. It's like a six stage envelope. Um, we'll talk about that. And you also have an EQ for the partial, which is pretty nice. Um, the only other thing is then uh, if you click this button here, it brings up a keyboard on screen, which is kind of nice. And if you click this button here, it brings up the MFX section, which we will talk about again in the future, but has all sorts of different things that you can do with that. And also brings up this mod matrix here. Uh, one thing to note, at least on my Mac, uh, Mac mini M1 2020 or 2021, I think, um, when you do stuff like that, it resets your zoom, which is a little bit annoying, uh, but we go back to zoom and we bring it back up. Um, but that's it. That's the overview of what this is going to be. Uh, thank you so much for watching. In the next video, we're going to go over the structure section and the oscillator section of Xenology Pro. So uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you then.